Hi, I'm Julia Caserta. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm in eighth grade. Hi, I'm Zachary Henningsen. I use he, him, and I'm in seventh grade. Welcome to All Things LGBTQ+, Youth, Youth Edition. Edition. <laughs> the date is the 19th of February, 2018. Today we're talking about the raising of the flag at the Montpelier High School, the Black Lives Matter flag. Let's get into that. What do you have to say about that, Zach? Um, I think it's a lot of progress, or and the club, the Black Lives Matter club at the high school is doing a lot of really good work, mm -hmm. and I'm really glad that it happened because that's a good thing. Yeah, and it was uh, really cool just to see the fact that these kids were able to make this change. It wasn't like the adults or anything. When I read the letter that they sent to the school board, and it was. It's really professional and really well written, and it was great to see students making such a big change in that, in that sense. And it's also really good that it's like it kind of brings pride to like us as a part, the fact that we're a part of that community, like we're a part of the Montpelier community, and I'm going to attend that high school, and we were, we were the first public high school to do it in America, and it's going to be really cool to be able to attend it and walk yeah. by it every day. Yeah. And um, I think they've caused a few other schools to start to plan on that, which is really good. U thirty two and the one of the Burlington High Schools. I don't know if there's more than one, but that's really good. Mm -hmm. Progress is great. And uh, when you walk around downtown now, you see a bunch of churches that have the Black Lives Matter flag up. I went to school today and all like loads of the staff members were wearing a Black Lives Matter shirt and it was just really great to see because it just proves that we are making progress and that this can be, we can, humans can be accepting. Yeah, and um, it's a huge step ahead and mm -hmm. that's great. I think it's, it's great that they did it. It probably would have been better to do it sooner, but like the fact that they did it is mm -hmm. awesome. And the fact that it's now leading other schools to do it and maybe eventually loads of schools across America will be able yeah. to, will have these flags up and people will be able to walk into school and feel safe that they and like colored students will be able to walk in and feel safe seeing that flag up there and not maybe feel slightly less discriminated against. Even though even though it might not completely stop bullying, it might just help some people feel like, okay, I have a place here. Like, I know if a fl like a flag isn't going to stop students from bullying other students. It's not going to stop kids from being mean, but it might, it's, it's progress, essentially. It's, it's a step towards a better future. Yeah. Um, speaking of, like, safety in schools, um, there's been some recent events. The school shooting in Florida that brought up a lot of like questions that should have been answered or acted upon a while ago, but um, about gun control and safety in school mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Yeah, I think there's been around 18 school shootings in the year, and it's only February. We're only two months into the school year, which is an insane amount. It's like you wouldn't expect there to be that many, but there already are. Like. I, what I would, when I was younger, I would assume, okay, 18 maybe in an entire year. That's still not good, but it's slightly better. And now it's become, in two months, 18 school shootings. And it just really brings into question, as students, is anyone safe in school? Like, what could, like, what could yeah. we do to make school safer? Because, like, school safer. Yeah. Um, more about, like, gun control and stuff. Definitely limiting act or completely removing access to people on getting firearms. Mm -hmm. I understand some people do need firearms for food or yeah, stuff hunting. like that. Yeah. Um, I personally, in an ideal world, I would believe that civilians shouldn't have firearms. And I understand the military needs it, of course, because wars are always going to be happening. That's never going to stop. But I but we obviously don't live in an ideal world and some people can't afford to go to the grocery store and buy themselves meat to feed their family so they go out hunting, which is a really big thing in Vermont. Lots of people hunt. And to do that, they own firearms. And those firearms, could, they aren't designed to kill humans, but they could. 
and it's so easy to buy a gun. Like I walked into a camping store with my dad once. I think he was, we were buying like a like fishing poles or something, and I just walked in and I saw rows upon rows of guns, and I was still really young, and I was like, wow, those are killing machines, and I didn't really know what that really meant, but like now I do, and I'm like. That's a lot of things that could potentially end a human life. Yeah. There are so many of them. I think there was recently a gun show in Burlington. I don't really know what that was about, and I don't really understand why. Why would you need to show off guns? I, but, again, I do believe that we shouldn't, civilians shouldn't have guns, but that's not going to happen. But since we can't do that... <laughs> we should at least limit it and make it a harder process. And like maybe a more in-depth background check to see if they've ever done anything with a criminal record or if, they're have, if they've abused substances or anything like that and then not sell them the gun. It should, yeah, yeah it's like, it might even be like a week, like a week long process or even longer just so it's really hard. So most people, most people will be like, I'm not gonna do that because yeah. most people will just be like, yeah, I'm not going through all that. Or I think, I don't know exactly, I don't know the details of buying weapons or firearms. It's fairly easy. But um, I think, I don't, at one point you required a license to get mm -hmm. it. And I think that's good still. But how hard, how easy is it to get the license or? Mm -hmm. I yeah. don't know if we still have those licenses in Vermont, at least. <coughs> yeah. So maybe we could integrate some kind of form of license to be able to own a gun and make that license hard to get. Yeah. So, like, I just think you should have, first off, I think you should have a reason. I don't think you can just go in and be like, hey, guy, give me a gun. And that guy's like, okay. I think you should have to present a reason. I think you should have to present li a license and identification so that it's and a background check. So proof, I'm not going to misuse this. I'm only going to use this for recreational purposes or hunting, and, not, and I'm not going to use this to hurt a fellow human beings. Yeah. And this can also, gun control can also kind of be contributed to the school shootings and how easy it is for people to get guns. Like, students were able to get guns and go in and yeah. <coughs> shoot uh, fellow students. Like, and how old, is there like an age restriction? I'm not very knowledgeable on this. I think the person who um, the shooter of the Florida high school, I think they were 17, and I don't think they bought the gun, I think they got it from their family or something, mm -hmm. and I know that they had had a history of mental illness, and apparently a lot of the students reported them to the police, but nothing happened because of the fact that they probably just brush it off because it's like, oh, they're just kids. No one would do something like that. Yeah, and what you said about families owning guns, some people will make the argument that, oh, I, ha I own the gun to protect my family. But there are ways to protect your family without owning a gun. Like my father, he sleeps with a metal bat next to his bed, or he used to. Now it's in the garage. But there are still ways to, or you could install like safe, like safe houses. Like there are like technology coming out that protects your home and your family instead of owning a firearm. And like, I know some, there are some people who will sleep with a knife next to them. And like, that's not safe, but it's still better than having an automatic killing machine, in and my I opinion. can't kill as many people because... Yeah, a knife wouldn't be as fast as a gun either. Yeah, I think I saw that, um, again, I don't know how accurate the information is, but I saw that all, like, the past, the, like, big school shootings have all been the same kind of weapon, like um, some sort of firearm that fires fast enough. Mm -hmm. Because if you've seen like videos of the school and you can hear the gunshots in the background, it's a lot of... Mm -hmm. And that's the thing, that yeah. guns are they're deadly and they're fast, and you can kill many people in minimal amount of time by the time you... <coughs> did what you wanted to do and kill these students, you could be out of there. It's just, it's so quick. It's just, bang, you're done. Yeah. Which obviously isn't right for people to have because it's so easy. And this can also, and like, as a student, I know that our school has lockdowns in case something like this happens where it's like, 
Every, we turn off the lights and we go and we hide in the cor- in the corner where there's no windows, no doors, and we lo- and the teacher if they can locks the door. But personally, I don't think that's enough, and I also don't think that students take that seriously enough. Because so many kids just think, oh, we're in Montpelier, nothing bad's gonna happen here. Yeah. When something bad did happen at the high school, yeah. and like I'm sitting there and I have my phone out and I'm like, well, I'm not. I just ho- I'm holding my phone because it's my baby, and. I'm sitting there and I hear these kids just playing games or making jokes in the middle of a lockdown. Like, even if it's a drill, they don't know it's a drill. And they're putting my safety and everyone else's safety at risk because they can't shut up and sit and sit quiet for two minutes. Yeah, and with the drills I watched a while ago, I watched, it wasn't really a documentary, but it was like a news report or something on people from the military kind of training teachers a little bit. I think I saw that as well. Yeah. And I like the idea of, honestly. Like, I don't like the idea of teachers owning guns, because obviously yeah. I don't think anyone should own guns. Because then students would have access to it. Yeah. They, yeah. And, but I still think, like, training a teacher in defense and self-defense and how to take down an attacker someone's there or how to disarm them would be yeah. better than having us just be there sitting ducks in case they want to come in. Like, yeah. also... It's not that hard to break down the door, in my opinion. They could probably get in, even with the lock. There are ways to get in. Yeah, people were in the, some of the, I heard from the uh, Florida shooting, they were shooting through the door, Mm -hmm. and that still hit some students. I don't think it was, like, life-threatening for Mm -hmm. that, but it's still. Because it slows the bullet down, too. But still, the thing is, and and I get passionate about this topic, but the thing is, kids are dead, and nothing has been done. 18 shootings in a year. Not that much has been done. There have been past shootings. Nothing has been done. And children who have barely lived are dead. Even if it, when adults, are, who even if they are on the older side, they're still dead. Nothing's been done. Teachers, kids, dead. Nothing. It's just, it's like, when is it going to stop, in my opinion? When are people going to be like, crap, this is happening. We should do something or make it harder to get guns. Yeah. And, like, just saying, oh, you have my prayers and condolences. Yeah, I like, see that so much. I mean, thank you for being sorry, even though, like... Thank you for being sorry, but you're still not yeah, doing anything. You're still not doing anything. I think some of po- the politicians got paid from the NRA or something. The I don't know the acronym, but it's, like, the gun control or... Mm-hmm. Like, yes. And there was a recent, like, thing at the state house where hunters would come in and they would argue their points. I saw something about that. And, again, I understand that people need guns. There are points where you need guns because you can't afford to go to the grocery store and buy food for your family. But I still don't think that it should be so easy to go into a school and kill students. And also, I don't think, I think that even in safe places, like even in Montpelier, where you wouldn't expect anything to happen, we still need to take extra measures. Like, we have a door where the people who work in the office see who's coming in. We have cameras all over the school. But in the event of someone coming in, I doubt many students, and we have pretty young students in our school, I doubt many of them know what to do. or like, Because they know what to do in the drill, but in a real situation, the drill is not going to do much. So like, follow, follow the rules. But still, if you need to, if you need to do something, you gotta, you have to like. We don't know really how to evacuate. The only evacuations are the main doors and a side door. Two, we have two side doors and a main door. That's the only way to get in and out of the school. So if it's still, we don't know the correct evacuation measures because when we evacuate for a fire drill, it's like a stampede of students running down. Then that's not that stealthy if there's a shooter in the in the school. Yeah. That's what the, I think, the Florida shooter, that's what they did. They tried to evacuate? They, like, uh, they turned on the fire alarm so students would go in the hallways. Mm -hmm. And at that point, when you're in a school and there's a shooter there, you're basically a sitting duck if you don't. Yeah. And if it is a student who is shooting at people, they have knowledge of the drills. They have knowledge of how it's supposed to work. And the door doesn't do anything because the office people are like, oh, hey, I know that kid. I've talked to that kid. I've talked to that kid's parents. They're probably here for school. Let's let them in. Yeah. And, and like, there's no check in front of the door, too. But I also, I saw a lot of videos to these schools who took it to an insane extreme where they would have police officers coming in the drill and 
fire off fake guns and like sound, sounds of guns to scare the students. I don't think school should be doing that because that could traumatize kids, but I do think that extra measures need to be taken. At this point, there have been 18 in one year. It could happen anywhere, in any school, no matter how safe the town seems to be. And that can also go into what happened at the high school a while ago. From what I know, a man robbed the bank and then fled to the high school and was threatening people with, uh, I believe it was a fake gun, but they didn't yeah. know that at the time. And like, I got a text from my sister and she was like, Jules, are you okay? Because she thought someone, someone else was there at the uh, middle school. And then I was like, holy hell, what's happening at my sister's school? Is she okay? Is our other students okay? Is she ter- she's probably terrified? Is she safe? Mm-hmm. And, I don't even, and that's terrifying to have to go through if you are at the school or if your sibling or your parents work at the school. It's terrifying to see, oh my God, my sister could potentially die. Even if, it, even if now that we know it's a fake gun. Yeah. And, like, I don't, bel- I don't think any extra precautions have been taken at the high school since. Nothing's changed there. No. And it's like, even though no one, was, no one died except for the um, gun, gun, gunmen, still nothing happened. And even though no one died, no one's really taking it into precaution and realizing it could happen in Montpelier. Yeah, and I feel like a lot of people have just kind of forgotten about that. Uh, specifically in Montpelier, and people have just become more and more desensitized to, like, hearing about school shootings. Like, some people are really affected. But, like, you, you, sorry yeah. to interrupt you, but, like, you see kids, and it's, like, you, well, like I know for people who see it on their phones, sigh, get upset for, like, two minutes, and they just become so desensitized, and they just forget. And yeah. it's like, oh, there's another one. I'm upset. Let's move on. And again, kids are dead, nothing's being done. And it also makes students feel unsafe. Like, if I have to walk into a school every day and not feel safe, it's gonna make it harder for me to focus, it's gonna worsen my education, and it's gonna be, probably be traumatic for some students. Like, if you no longer feel safe in a place where you spend most of your time, and you just no longer feel safe surrounded by your peers because you know anything could happen at any moment, all of these kids could be dead with a fast killing machine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like you said earlier about the per- the drill where they took it to the extreme with the person uh, like firing fake bullets or whatever, mm-hmm. like outside of the doors. I think that if they knew it was a drill, it would have been a little more acceptable, but the fact that it's they didn't know it was a drill, it's still to it's hear still a bullet not a sound good thing. terrifying. Yeah, and like I've in a school sounds, safe, in like a school place, which is supposed to be safe. Mm-hmm. It's like again, I spend all my, t- I spend most, I spend more time with my teachers and my peers than I do with my family now, because like when I get older, that would probably be different, but still, now I, I'm always with these people, and if I don't feel safe, it's not good, it's terrifying. Because again, I walk in and I know that anyone could die today because anyone could walk in and start shooting kids because anyone can get a gun. And it's just, yeah. it's all connected and it's all terrifying. And again, what really bothers me is nothing's being done. Like yeah. people will discuss it, but then people become, again, like you said, so desensitized to it. It's like, oh, Another school shooting. Yeah. What the hell are you gonna do? Yeah, and um, n- my mother she thought that we were gonna have like an assembly or something to like talk about it. We didn't have one for when the person was at the high school. Mm-hmm. I don't think we've had ones um, for when the other shootings happened in the U.S. The, what the only thing that's offered and, to us in our yeah. school is that counselors. So yeah. for the Florida shooting, we were. Uh, parents get a mass text and being like, counselors are available, but I don't really want or need a counselor. I need something to be done so I can walk into school and not feel like, hey, I might die today. My friend might die today. Who knows? There's no guarantee. Yeah, and like, again, having an assembly, raising awareness, like, even if it's just for like the seventh and eighth graders because they understand it better. I hate that when they think younger kids don't understand this stuff. Yeah, 
I mean, there's sometimes they don't like yeah. they yeah. can't understand some but things, mm -hmm. but it's still important to tell them mm -hmm. to tell them in a way that you think is acceptable. Uh -huh. So our school does something called the sheltered in place, where if you stay in the classroom or you stay in the school, and that was called over the loudspeaker, and I looked over from my teacher, and she looked at me, and she was like, what the hell does that mean? She didn't say hell, because she's, she's a professional. She's like, what does that mean? And I was like, you don't know? You don't know the proper drills? You're supposed to protect, you're supposed to take care of these students, and you don't know the proper drills. Yeah. What? Sorry? What? Ah. Like, not telling the teachers? Yeah, not like, telling the teachers to use Has drills. she been there? Is she there at the school for multiple years? Like, no, she's she a new teacher, but still. If this were, yeah. if this was a real thing, it, well, I don't believe it was a real thing, I'm not it sure. Wasn't. But if it was a real thing, and we, and she didn't know the drills, and she was like, oh, shelter in place, that means lockdown, or that means evacuate. I don't know why she would think that. Someone could be put in danger by these teachers or students not being educated about these proper th about these proper drills. Yeah, during the shelter in place, one of these students in my <coughs> classroom, they like went out into the hallway to like get a drink of water. No, and you can do that. Well, yeah, shelter but in place is like, so, so clarification. They told us to stay in the classrooms. Yeah. Clarification though, self shelter uh, self. Shelter in place is we cannot leave the school. We're, like, we're in the building. No one's allowed on the playground. We stay in the school. You can still be in the hallway. But there was this girl who went out in the hallway who's a part of my class. She went out in the hallway before the announcement came on, and she just sat there like, what, what do I do? And she went into a different, I think she went into a different classroom, and she was like, hey, what do I do? And the teacher was like, oh, you can stay in here, because that teacher didn't know it meant that you could still be in the school. So that girl just missed a chunk of her math class, which, again, makes it harder for her to get a proper education. Yeah. And I think, so we normally, I feel like every shelter in place is organized, so it's not during gym class, at least. That's how it was, like, during gym or lunch. That's how it was for me in a different school that I was at. I don't think we have shelter in place, or I don't think we have a drill specifically during lunch, I think we had the shelter in place because someone threw up in the hallway. <laughs> but um, the I think we should prac like practice, have a drill like at lunch, have a drill outside. We're trying to get students to take them seriously. Yeah. Like I again, like what I was saying before, how kids are giggling with their friends, or playing games on their iPhones, or rock paper scissors. I look over them and I'm like, do you realize what you're doing? Like, do you understand that you are putting me at risk and everyone else at risk? Like, it's your own choice if you want to go out and put yourself at risk. Go ahead. I'm, I'm going to try to stop you, but I can't control what you do. But when it comes to putting the rest of us in danger, just be quiet for a few minutes. And they just think, oh, it's to drill. When we have no indication when it's a drill or not in our school. It's, we never know. Unless she specifically says it's a drill. We never know. And these kids are just laughing about it. And I'm like, we could have died. You don't know. We could, be, we could be about to die in two seconds. You don't know. Stop playing rock, paper, scissors. Um, yeah. And the fact, I think, locking the door. So in the school that we are in, um, they don't always lock the door because it makes, like, a sound or something. I don't really Jesus know. <laughs> I think since... They, if they're going to the school, they know there are people in the school because it's a school day and there's cars That's outside. Why go there, and they want to kill all that people. Yeah. I don't think the sound of a lock, like, sure, it'll alert the classroom, but I think the lock itself is more important than the safety of the student. Well, like, no. if not unlocking the, if keeping the door unlocked, that's less important than yeah. the safety of the students. But also, we're not allowed to have our phones in school. It's just not, I think a lot of kids do, but we're not allowed to. Especially, like, in lockdowns, you leave everything, you go. And if I can't have my phone on me, and my teacher's away from the, pho away from the classroom phone, who's, and it's real, who's going to call 911? Who's going to alert parents that, hey, you know, I could die? I think the office would probably call. But the office is also in lockdown. Well, I think they'd call. If there's someone on the premises, like, I think we'd hear a gunshot if someone got shot. 
and I think that, point, that would be... be able to have our phones and call 911, even if they're still yeah. coming, call them again. I think multiple calls is not always, like, calling them multiple times is not going to change anything. I know, but it can also provide safety. Like, it could also make the kids feel better. Yeah. It's like, to know, hey, I'm not completely helpless in this situation. I could potentially do something, or my teacher could potentially do something, and I'm not just a sitting duck. You feel helpless if this was, like... Even in drills, I still feel helpless. Cause it's like, I'm just sitting here. It might be real. I don't know. You feel like you can't do anything. In my personal experience, I don't know if yeah. that's like it for everyone. Um, how they have it, I think we can't have our phones out. At least that's how it is. Like I keep my phone in my pocket just because. We're it's not. We're not meant to have them at all. They're meant to be in our lockers. Well, I don't think. I don't know. I think it's important that to have some form of communication in, in a case of emergency. Uh-huh. And like when my sister texted me, like I said a while ago, Yeah. even though it was still terrifying because I didn't know what was happening there, I knew, okay, she was well enough to text me this. That provides me some comfort to her, so that I know, even if she's injured, she was able to text me a message. And she's able to communicate with people and not just sit there. Yeah. It's like, again, like, I've said this a lot, but you're, sit- you're a sitting duck. It's just, just, what do you do? What do you do? We don't know what we're supposed to do because we haven't been taught what we're supposed to do. Yeah. In a classroom, it was not in my classroom, but in a certain classroom, they were given rocks to throw. I was in that classroom. <laughs> we painted rocks. I put a creepy-ass face on mine so it would scare the person. <laughs> and if anyone comes to the room during lockout, we chuck our rocks at them. I don't and I love that. Yeah. Draw, the problem with that, you could, like, draw attention to yourself, but, I mean, because, like, if you throw a rock and it, like... But, like, say... If everyone throws it at once, it's not going to draw attention. Yeah, but, like, say you're a person coming in, and yeah. you're going to, like, kill a bunch of these kids, and you're just pelting with creepy-ass rocks. <laughs> and then by the time they're, like, either injured or, like, dazed, what, we're, what I would consider doing is... We could, yeah. Sorry, I'm getting off track. But in a form of, it also provided the kids some comfort, cause like it again, it was like we're not completely helpless. Yeah. We have these rocks, but like there are precautions like students could be taught to take, like in an event of a lockdown, barricade the door of your desk, yeah. cause we could move our desks, Bar- grab something to throw. We weren't taught any of that. This was just a singular teacher who was like, hey kids, let's paint some rocks and throw at people. But like if we were taught as a school. In an event of a lockdown, grab a heavy book, grab your textbook, grab anything you can throw. That would, A, it would be more protection, and B, it would provide the kids some comfort. Yeah, and like the uh, little film that I was talking about, about the thing, I think they had one where it wasn't the students, but it was a group of teachers, like, re- like tried to resist against like a mm-hmm. trained agent or something. I think we watched the same video. Yeah. And it worked. Like they all threw tennis balls at the person and they then they like and then another time they tackled them. Mm-hmm. I feel like maybe it should I feel like if it's a life or death situation and like if you're just sitting there, it's you're probably gonna have the same chance of being shot if like if a group of people is mm-hmm. But, like, say a group of people tackle them and, like, get into the floor. Yeah, that's Then good. the rest of the key people can leave, maybe call 911, and if they can hold them there long enough for the police officers to get there, and take the firearm then away. guess what? No one died, hopefully. And, like, if you take the yeah. firearm away, and, like, in the video, te- teachers were so- taught how to carefully remove the firearm without hurting anyone. Yeah. I... I Honestly, for the point I just want to drill home here is kids are dead. Nothing was done. Yeah. I think we should want to end it there. Yeah. Thank you for watching.